أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ويوم يعض الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتا ليتني لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد أضنني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورا وكذلك جعلنا لكل نبي عدوا من المجرمين وكفى بربك هاديا ونصيرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ثم اما بعد وانسجان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, I'll be reciting ayat, or I was reciting ayat 27 on to 30 from Surah Al-Furqan, Surah number 25. And we have moved to the subject really of the most important type of companionship in this world. We talked yesterday about the importance of seeking forgiveness and recognizing one's sin. And today, inshallah ta'ala, what can lead, one of the biggest things that can lead a person into a life of sin. We begin with an ayah that describes a person on the Day of Judgment, which according to some Sahaba is a specific individual, but according to the majority, the implication is gen- gen- general. It applies to anyone that fits the description. وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمْ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمْ rather. The day on which the wrongdoer is going to be binding عَلَى يَدَيْهِ on both his hands. The first thing Allah says is this person is going to be binding on chewing on both of his hands. Now this action is not done by somebody in their sane mind, first of all. It's done by something, someone completely overwhelmed by fear or emotion or shock. And you will see people do this in the world, and this is an ancient practice even, that doesn't happen voluntarily, it happens involuntarily. You know, you'll see people, they come home and their house is on fire. And the expression that's on their face and the sounds they're making are not the sounds you expect from a grown human being, right? There's this shock and there's sadness, an overwhelming sadness that's taken over them. Similar things happen at the, at the death of a family member. If you see people that are at that situation and they first hear the news, the kind of reaction they have is very strong. It almost it breaks the human being, that kind of a reaction. So Allah Azza wa describes this state on the Day of Judgment of a person who did wrong, and He says He'll be biting on both of His hands. يَعَدُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ Yaqul, and then he, as he's biting onto his hands, he's saying, Ya Laytani, ittakhadtu ma'ar rasuli sabila. If only, Layta, there are two words here, actually three, Ya and Layta and Ni. Ya is called harf nida. Also called harf al hasra here. It's a word to call on someone and a word to call in despair. You know, like in English, people say, Oh, or ah, you know, this, this, this cry that comes out of you. That's Ya alone. And then there's the word Layta, and Layta in Arabic is very powerful. You use it in, in, when you're describing, you know the English expression, expression, crying over spilt milk? Right, when it's too late to cry over spilt milk, that's that whole expression. But when somebody's in that situation and they've lost everything, the word that comes out of their mouth in English is probably a cry or a sigh, right? But in Arabic is the word Layta. And then what have they lost? They haven't lost something else, they've lost themselves. So, Ya Laytani. And then this person says, اِتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلَ If only, if only, I took, اِتَّخَذَ is different from أَخَذَ. Now there's another subtlety here. أَخَذَ is to take something. اِتَّخَذَ is to take something and hold on to it. And to love it. And to be addicted to it, really strongly. Like this is the word Allah uses for Bani Israel when they had taken the calf. We heard about in Taraweeh today. Right, when they were worshipping this baby cow, this calf, Allah says, اِتَّخَذُ they took it, they held on to it, meaning they were in love with worshipping this thing. So now in this way he says, I wish I had a love and I held on with full love and devotion to what? Ma'ar Rasuli Sabila. A path that goes alongside, exactly alongside the Messenger. If I had taken a way of life that goes and coincides with the way of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he says again, Ya Waylata. 
And there's again three words here, ya and wayla, and then ta at the end they consider also bameed if ya, but it's converted into alif for phonetic reasons. So first he cried laytani, ya laytani, and he's crying again, ya waylata. And on top of this he just says again laytani on top of that. So he, what Allah is describing is this insane moment of a person who's beating on himself, crying senselessly on the Day of Judgment. And now look at what he says. The first time he was showing his regret, he was saying, if only I took away alongside the Messenger. If only I chose a way for my life that goes a long way with the Messenger's life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second time, the second time he says, لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا If only I hadn't taken such and such person, this etc. person, as my close friend, as my, you know, my buddy, the person I rely on. There are two things here. One, you know, we would think when these ayat are being recited, they're talking about non-Muslims. They're talking about kuffar because they don't believe in the Messenger wasallam. But the ayat are very subtle. Allah Azza wa Jal did not describe this person crying and saying, I wish I believed in the Messenger. If only I had believed in him. He doesn't say that. He says, if only I had taken a path alongside the Messenger wasallam. So there could be a tragic human being that is a believer who says la ilaha illallah and he says Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam but doesn't take a path alongside the Messenger still. Doesn't care for the sunnah of this Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Is not concerned with what he says. Is not concerned with his way of life. So that could be the case here too and he's still a volume, right? Because he doesn't even say kafir, he says dhalim. And then the second time around, what is it? You know, if we don't have a love and devotion for the sunnah and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa it's obviously coming with an, something else is filling that void. And usually that void is filled with our company, our friends. And our friends in this day and age, it's kind of weird, because either we have human friends or we have virtual friends. You know, we're living in a strange time. Right? So either you have friends outside, you play sports with them. You know, back when I was in high school, kids, you know, would go out to, you know, go see a movie or go play with some pool or some basketball or something. You have friends you hang out with on a daily basis. Nowadays, your friends are on Facebook and on MySpace. Or your friend is your Xbox and your profile on some, you know, online video game. That's your friend. You know, it's not just talking about physical friends. It's whatever you hold on dear and you spend all of your time with it and it calls you away from the way of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this person is crying on that day, if I didn't take that, if only I didn't take that as my friend. That person. And then in this ayah, because Allah azza wa jal, you know, describes this person who was an alternative to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa an alternative to the sunnah. He goes further, this person, and, and says, لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ This alternative friend of mine, this Khalil of mine that I took my whole life, he misled me. He took me away عن الذكر, away from الذكر. And the ijma of this ummah is, الذكر here means Qur'an. The first ayah about the sunnah, the second ayah about Qur'an. This person took me away from the Qur'an. He misled me from the Qur'an. And just commenting on the word an, we find Ibn Kathir rahimahullah saying, he says, because of this an, this person would come to you as a friend and say, what are you wasting your time doing this for? Or he would give you argument after argument, what does this ayah mean and what does that ayah mean? You don't know, or are you following something you don't even know? This is confusing, this is a contradiction, how come Allah says this? How come there's polygamy in the Qur'an? And how come there are these ayat? How come one ayah was cancelled by another ayah? They will come with intellectual types of arguments. And when you say, I don't know, I'm not a scholar, but why are you wasting your time? Come with me, let's go see a movie. You know, let's go do something, let's go hang out. You know, why, why don't you join us anymore? So they will come to you with arguments. Or they will come to you with peer pressure. But they will pull you away from the remembrance. There will be something that will pull you away from having this relationship with Qur'an. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي And this is the tragedy. You know, so far you could blame the friend. So far in the ayah he's saying, if I didn't take him as a friend, I wouldn't be in this mess. He is the one who took me away from the dhikr. But then he realizes the blame is his own. بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي after the dhikr, the Qur'an had already come to me. I already knew Qur'an. I already knew about the ayat. I already knew this is this friend is taking me away from the dhikr. I still took his way. I still took him as a friend. I still thought that would be the way to go. So, لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي And then he says, وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا He realizes that wasn't his friend. His friend was just a tool. But the real enemy in this case was who? 
Shaitan. Shaitan has always been, in the case of the human being, for the human being, Khadul. And Khadul is also a very important word. Khadul is different from other words in Quran in describing the enemy of Shaitan. Adu, you know the word Adu, which is enemy. Khadul is someone who pretends to be your friend and goes alongside you. And as soon as he leads you to the cliff where you're falling off, he runs away. So he, he knows that he's leading you to destruction. He knows it. But he will stay with you and push you on and encourage you and say, no, this is the way to go. I'll, I'm with you all the way. And as soon as you go too far all the way, that's when he abandons you. And look at this, this ultimate type of deception. He's not just a deceiver. Khadil is different. Khadul, exceptional deception. This ultimate kind of deception. You don't realize that he's fooling you until it's too late. That's Khadul. So, وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانِ الْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا Now it's too late, now he realizes. So he calls the shaitan Khadul. And then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See, so far it was the zalim describing, being described. And then the messenger is being quoted in this ayah on the day of judgment. Before we quote this ayah, we know that the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is given the exceptional, exceptional permission by Allah azza wa to make shafa'a on the day of judgment. To intercede and to request and to plead on behalf of his ummah on the day of judgment. All of you know this. And the permission and the room for that is even mentioned in the Atul Kursi, illa bi idnihi. Right? Except by his, by Allah's permission. So this shafa'a is there and we all pray that we are part of that umbrella which the Messenger covers on the Day of Judgment sallallahu alayhi wa But you know what's not often talked about? There are two testimonies of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And they're polar opposites. One testimony for this ummah in its favor. To protect this ummah from the fire of hell. On the Day of Judgment he makes a case for his ummah to protect them from the fire of hell. But there's another testimony, and this is the other testimony. This is the testimony in which the Messenger ﷺ is prosecuting, making a case against some people from this ummah. May Allah not make us from them. And imagine, on the Day of Judgment, Allah is the judge. You know how you have a courthouse, you have a judge and you have lawyers? Allah is the judge. And who's the prosecutor? Muhammad Rasulullah ﷺ. Who's going to win a case against him? If he testifies against someone, if he makes a case against someone, what, uh, what hope does this person have left? And what does the Messenger say? وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. The Rasul says on that day, Ya Rabb, my Lord, إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا This nation of mine, this nation of mine, without a doubt, they took the Qur'an and abandoned it. Mahjura means to leave something, to make hijrah from it, to leave it behind. And he says this, not about the kuffar, what's he saying this? Who's he saying this to? إِنَّ قَوْمِ Inna qawmi. You know, we learn in Quran also, when Surah Al-Kafirun was revealed, before this, the messenger would say qawmi, like all the other messengers would say qawmi, my nation. He would say this to Quraysh. But then Surah Al-Kafirun was revealed and he wouldn't call them qawmi. What did he call them? Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. He didn't say qul ya qawmi la a'budu ma ta'budun. He said qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. Because who's his qawm now? His qawm, his ummah. Now the people who believe him are his qawm. Before these ayat, before Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun, they're his nation like all the other messengers invited their nation. Inni da'utu qawmi laylan wa nahara. But now in this ayah, it includes the mushrikun, but it also includes those who allegedly follow the messenger wasallam. And his complaint to Allah against them is, they abandoned the Qur'an, they left the Qur'an. Inna qawm attakhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. And the final ayah in this passage, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ عَدُوًا And that is how we made for every single prophet, for every single prophet, عَدُوًا مِنَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ An enemy out of criminals. Now if you look at this ayah from before, the few ayat that we've been reading, Allah didn't mention any enemies of the Messenger. He didn't mention any enemies. He mentioned a person who walks away from the way of the Messenger, and it's too late. And he walks away from the dhikr, from Qur'an, because of his friend. So this is a person who lived a life of ghafla, and the two enemies, the two antithesis, anyone who takes away from Qur'an, and takes people away from the sunnah of his messenger wasallam, who does that represent? An enemy of the messenger wasallam. Can you imagine? And now look, there are two criminals here. One criminal is the one who calls his friend away from deen. The other criminal is the one who walks away from the deen. The one who leaves it. Because you know, every time a Muslim abandons this deen in practice, every time a Muslim proudly takes on disobedience to Allah, he has set a precedence 
an example for a hundred other Muslims to do the same thing. That's what he's done. He has become an enemy to this ummah. You will see this tragedy happen. Brothers tell me all the time, young brothers, they live here their whole life, their parents go to Egypt or Pakistan for summer vacation, and they go with them. And they go there and they make salah, and they're Muslim cousins in a Muslim country. Like, what are you doing, man? You praying? What's the matter with you? Aren't you from America? You know? What are you doing wasting your time like this? And they're, they're blasting music and the adhan is going on. He says, wait, 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 let's go to Masjid. What are you, okay, you go ahead, Shaykh. We're going to stay here. And these are Muslims. And what, have, what has happened? One person disobeys openly. And what does that do? It opens the floodgates for everybody to disobey openly. And this happens in the land of people who call themselves Muslims. The name that Ibrahim alayhi salam gave to us. Huwa samhakum wal muslimin. Those who submit before Allah azza wa jal. Those who give in completely. Right? So now, no wonder that in this passage, who is being considered an enemy? The ultimate enemy, shaitan. But the tool of shaitan, the first tool of shaitan is that bad friend. And the second tool of shaitan is the one who gave in to the waswasa of the friend. These are all criminals. And these are the criminals against which the Messenger testifies, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma la tij'anna minhum, Allahumma la tij'anna minhum. And then he says, وَكَفَى بِرَبِّكَ هَادِيًا وَنَصِيرًا After saying all of this, there is no excuse left. You can't blame your friends, you can't blame shaitan. You can only blame your, yourself. Because zikr came to you and it came to me. So Allah says at this point, and Allah is enough. وَكَفَى Rabbik. Allah is enough, your Lord is enough for you. Hadian wa nasira. He is enough for you as a guide, so seek his guidance. And he's enough for you for help, so seek his help. You, can, you say, I can't help myself, you haven't realized Allah is enough as help. You say, I'm confused, I'm misguided, you haven't realized Allah is the one to ask guidance from. Allah Azza wa Jal will guide. So may Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those people who don't make hijrah from the Qur'an, who don't get deluded by friends and society and any other distractions that virtual or real otherwise, that take us away from the remembrance of Allah and the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu li wa lakum shukur al-hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil-ayat wa dhikr al-hakim. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.